Now that you've seen how to make pads, let's see what they look like in practical use. And I'll open up the question with sort of a brain teaser. How would you go ahead and make a selection that was only the middle ground? Here you can see I'm doing a levels adjustment. Not the background, not the foreground, just the middle ground. And all we're going to use to accomplish this are the pads that are already in the document. You can see I have a background one, but all that calls up is the background. I also have a foreground elements one, but nowhere do I have just middle ground. Well, the fact is, all we need to do is a little addition or subtraction. So let's see what that looks like. Here's a very basic document. It's got one layer and three paths. And you can see along the bottom, I've just made a few goals. So what we're gonna do is derive selections from our paths, easy. Okay, I'll make a new layer to paint on. To make the square and circle, is no problem. I'll start by control clicking on the square. And then to add the circle into the same selection, I just add shift. So it's control shift click. Now I have both square and circle. And you see I can paint just like that, no problem. So what is the next shape we're looking at? Well, it's the same. It's square and circle, but it's missing that triangle in the middle. And you can see each of these little named paths I have are the various shapes. So triangle path needs to be subtracted from that last result. So we'll start by calling up square plus circle. And now we need to subtract triangle. Well, no problem. This is control alt click. Cool. So when I paint here, you can see it looks just like the goal we're going for. So what is this last one? It looks a little confusing. Well, it's really no harder than the others. It is triangle minus square. And the result is this odd looking shape right here. But the point is I only have three paths, each of which are on their own path layers, but I can make a variety of different intersections and really just with addition and subtraction, I can get a whole variety of shapes. Okay, let's look at a little more complicated example. So this looks just like the last example, except I've added in some complicated windows. So just as a refresher, I'd start making this path on its own layer. Here you can see I have a path called windows, which contains all of these shapes, but I'll make a fresh one just to show you. So I'd use the pen tool and I would begin by making a single square. And of course getting it to be straight is very important, so I'll use the direct selection tool to correct my mistakes. And then I just hold down Alt and drag to duplicate shapes. This is one of those areas where paths are very nice to work with. Once you've made a shape, you don't need to make it a second time. But this top part is a little different, so I'll make that. And then once you've made this whole selection of windows, you can add all together hold Alt, and duplicate it. So in this way, I've just made a new path. It happens to be called Path 1, but you could call it whatever you wanted. And it has all of the windows on it. It does not have the circle, the triangle, or the square. I can control click it, and all I get is the window selection. Cool. All right. So let's go through here and try and make goals 1 through 3. Goal 1 is pretty straightforward. I'm going to start by selecting the square, add in the triangle, add in the circle. But now I need to subtract the windows. No problem. Control Alt, subtract the windows, and there you go. The second one is pretty similar. I'm just gonna begin by getting the square, and then I'm going to add the windows, and there you can see I've matched our goal. Now goal number three you could go about in a couple different ways. To match what we've been doing, I'd start with the circle, and then I would subtract the windows, and the result would look like that. But there's sometimes in your document that those are always going to be paired. And this is certainly going to vary from illustration to illustration, but there might just be a shape that always has something cut out of it. Like if you had a donut in your image, you would never just want the outside. You would always want the inner circle cut out leaving a little bit of negative space. Well, in Photoshop, that's what they call a compound path. And here in this example, I've made another path called 
windows circle example. So if we click on that, we can see that the path has both the circle path as well as the window path. They're all on the same path layer. And when I control click that layer, you see what I get. The same as circle minus windows. It's actually the only thing I can get when I click on that path layer. So on one hand, having an example like this with a compound path is convenient. Again, like a donut, if you always want them together and you always want that hole in the middle, well then it's nice to have them on the same layer. So you don't always have to click the circle and then subtract the windows. You just get it in one click. But the problem is, if I did only want the circle and did not want the windows, a path like this is no good. Because with this path, I cannot separate the two. Not with control click. So for me, the most useful thing in general is having separate named paths. So I would just stick with having circle path on its own, windows path on its own, and then knowing how to use addition and subtraction I could generate circle minus windows without too much challenge. But it's important to understand why you might have compound paths on a single path layer or to keep them separate. It's really up to you. So looking back at our document here, how might we create that middle ground only? Well, we're first going to start with background. So I'll control click on that and you can see I have just the background. And in this case, I actually want the opposite of the background. I want everything but the background. So to do that, I'm going to do select inverse. And this is a very important keyboard shortcut to know. I use the menu there, but generally I do it as a keyboard shortcut. Especially when you're using paths, being able to have the opposite of that path is very handy. Okay, so I have the opposite of the background, but now I need to remove a few things. I'm going to need to remove the foreground elements. So I control alt click and I've now removed the foreground and I'm going to go ahead and also remove the river and the window backing. So now I'm going to make a layer group and set that selection as the mask and just painting here with a very visible color. You can see where my selection went. So it's not the foreground, it's not the windows, and it's not the background. It's only the middle ground. And even though I did not make a path that was middle ground, it was not hard for me to select it. And that's sort of the path strategy. I'm going to go ahead and only make certain crucial shapes because I know that I can create other shapes using intersections. So another example would be, I want the inset around the windows, but not the glass itself. Okay, let's see how that would work. I'll begin by selecting window backing, which is the inset shape. And then I'll subtract, control alt, the window glass. So one more time, I'll make a layer group here and put a mask on it. And you can see that here I only have the inset shape and not the windows themselves. This is another one of those shapes that'd be a huge pain to keep trying to paint manually over and over and over if you wanted to make some changes. But when you have a few crucial paths, making a selection like this is no problem at all. And in a practical sense, it might be, I wanna just sort of enhance these windows. I wanna make them stand out a little bit. Well, I could just darken their shadows. So I would select a color, and here I can just paint with a big brush. I don't even have to worry about painting inside the lines because that selection is gonna take care of it for me. Or maybe I decide what I really wanna do is paint just the window glass. Well, no problem. Throw away this real quick. I will control click on window glass, and maybe I'll do an adjustment layer. So here I am affecting the levels of just the window glass. So the really important takeaway here is that paths are very powerful, but even more powerful is creating selections out of those paths intersections. And this will take a little while for you to wrap your head around, but it is super powerful and I definitely encourage you to use it.